No, Steffi, you know, that's why we don't do this. That's why she came on before the show. Uh, she won't do it? Okay. Oh, Barbara. <laughs> <laughs> well, here, to make up for the camera shy Barbara Goldberg, here's camera hog Dana Goldberg. Yeah. Hello. Thank you very Atten much. Good morning, everyone. Attention. Yes, my mother, my sweet mother. I'm speaking for a second. My sweet mother is in the living room, and I could not be happier. Oh, you cuteness. Okay. No, tell the story again. When you ran into Hillary Clinton after the election, what you said to her. Oh, I said the same thing you did. I'm so... I said the F word. I'm so effing mad that you are not the president of the United States. And she said, so am I. And we just had a moment. She was in her boot. She had just broken her ankle, I think, or, or hurt her ankle. Yeah, her oh, foot. Ay, ay, ay. I wish she broke it <sighs> off, listening broke to her it off speak, in Trump's act. Listening what? to her speak. She's mm. so presidential even I know. six years later. Yeah. You know, if this is who she is. It's part of every cell in her body. She was yeah. the most qualified candidate we ever had run for president of the yeah. united states yeah and so gracious about biden who's you know getting to do what she would have done with with uh, putin and uh, she was i mean it is amazing dana how many clips people find she was right about absolutely right. everything she warned everything. about absolutely everything that happens almost everything that happens someone will go oh yeah hillary said that here it is <laughs> right yep yeah yep um okay how infuriating was this when putin said um uh, when he was asked about how come all of your opponents are, you know, dead or poisoned or in jail. Uh, he sh he said, as for who's killing or who's throwing whom in jail, people came to the U.S. Congress with political demands. Over 100 people had criminal char charges placed on them. They face prison sentences. They're being called domestic terrorists. He specifically cited Ashley Babbitt. He said one person was simply shot on the spot by police, although they were not threatening the police with any weapons. In many countries, the same thing happens that happens in our country. I'd like to stress once more that we sympathize with what happened in the United States, but we have no desire to allow the same thing to happen in our country. I mean, oh, my God. Oh I mean, God. oh, my God. And then yeah. Biden bitch slapped him. We already played that about saying what a ridiculous conspiracy. Compare. What do you think a thousand insurrection is storming the Kremlin? What do you think would happen to them, Dana? I mean, seriously. I think yeah, I think, I think a, a, a zero would come out. I think a yes. thousand insurrectionists would go in and zero would come out. You're good at math. OK. Uh, Thank you. Dana, we've had Not some... just a pretty face. <laughs> but that is pretty. We've had some um, breaking news, as we know, this morning. The Supreme Court has unanimously, uh, uh, excuse me, no, that's the bad news. Right. Supreme Court has upheld Obamacare for the third time, rejecting a challenge back by Trump and GOP state attorneys. The bad news is the Supreme Court has unanimously ruled in favor of a Catholic agency that doesn't place foster kids with same-sex couples. Um, because no one knows how to protect children better than the Catholic Church. Am I right? Yes, Dana. Am I good right? point. Good. Was that snark? I think that was snark. Is that what? Okay. Um, yeah, this is, yes. Uh, Supreme Court ruled that Philadelphia violated the First Amendment when it froze the contract of a Catholic foster care agency that refused to work with same-sex couples as a potential foster parents because the agency believes that marriage should be between a man and a woman. Um, Dana, again, correct me if I'm wrong. Don't foster kids become foster kids because straight people somewhere have screwed up? Yeah, it's not really often that a baby's accidentally conceived with a lesbian or a gay couple. Right. And just like we don't get drunk at the bar and go, oh, God, we had a scare. I yep. stepped on a turkey baster by accident. Now look what happened. <laughs> Fell right on it. Fell yeah. right on it. Yeah. Um. Okay. So, yeah, that's obvious. I, I, the upsetting part of that is unanimous, right? Yeah. 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 It is actually very upsetting. Yeah, it's scary. Um, I did not. I swear on purpose save the homo juice stack for you. However, oh my god, what? Oh, it's, you have a homo juice stack? Today? I don't. It, it just I, happened to be in the stack, and Dana happens to be here. I, I gave it to you intentionally for her. Trump once again uh, cast dispersion on American Jews who didn't vote for him in 2016 or 2020. Uh, he said, I did the heights, I did Jerusalem, I did Iran. I believe we got 25 percent of the Jewish vote. It doesn't make any sense. Just seems strange to me. Oh, it must be the Jewish space lasers that destroyed mm. Jewish votes for Donald Trump with the help of an Italian. We blew up the voting Ita machines. With the help we of an, actually an, blew up the voting. With the help of an Italian satellite. <laughs> yeah, I assume. Yeah, we we actually blew up the voting machines with our space lasers. 
You recall he, uh, oh, he then said Jewish people who live in the United States don't love Israel enough. Dana, your response to that? I can't because it is a ridiculous statement. There is no response to stupidity. Okay. okay. <laughs> I just thought you might want to respond on behalf of all Jehus. Okay. Yeah. Uh, all right. Uh, Dana, I don't, we were talking about, uh, so we had Dr. Doom on, we were talking about Marjorie Taylor Greene trying to, you know, her fire Fauci act and just this ridiculous, like, gotcha that we're playing, that the right wing is playing, right, with uh, science. I mean, yeah, these, okay, Travis, am I missing something in the Fauci emails? What is in there that the right wing thinks? So there's this doctor that still believes this was not a lab leak, that it was a natural, but he wrote some letter early on saying scientists are looking at or exploring that it might be a lab leak. How is that a gotcha? Sean has a sound effect in the box of Yukon Cornelius telling you exactly oh. what is in those oh. emails. Oh, oh, oh! Nothing. There okay. you go. Uh, Dana, just okay. come with me a little bit while I blind you with science. So the Please. New York Times interviewed this scientist that wrote to Fauci. Um, again, can you explain to me why if it was a lab leak, that's somehow better for Donald Trump? He, as I keep saying no, endlessly, he was the one that defended China, their transparency, what a great job they were doing. He only switched to the lab leak thing and blaming China when the right, nothing else worked and he was looking for someone to blame. First of all, he was trying to make it about, look oh, look how great I am and because I have such a great relationship with Z and look what a great job he's doing because I have such a great relationship with him. Right? And then he just saw how much he was being blamed for what was happening and then turned to that. It wasn't like it was, okay. Anyway. Here he said. Uh, so they, they, he was asked, "Do you still believe all laboratory scenarios are implausible?" Um, it, it talked about what about an accidental leak. He said, "While both lab and natural science scenarios are possible, they are not equally likely. Precedents, data, and other evidence strongly favored natural emergences as a highly likely scientific theory for the emergence of COVID. While the lab leak remains a speculative hypothesis based on conjecture." Um, based on detailed analysis of the virus conducted to, um, to date by researchers around the world, it's extremely unlikely the virus was engineered. The scenario in which the virus was found in nature, brought to a lab and then accidentally released, is similarly unlikely based on current evidence. What do they not get about science is evolving based on data and research? You could That's the point of research. Sentence. Yeah. You could have stopped that sentence at what don't they get about science? Because it's everything. <laughs> they don't believe it. They don't get it. Right. It's, Yeah. Right. Well, he said vigorous debate is integral to science. That's why we, what we've seen regarding the origins of COVID. It can be difficult at times for the public to observe the debate and discern the likelihood of various hypotheses. That is particularly true where the, the science becomes politicized and the current vilification of scientists and subject matter experts sets a dangerous precedent. We saw that with the climate change debate, and now we're seeing it with the debate around various facets of COVID. Um, throughout this pandemic, I've made my best effort to help explain what the scientific evidence is and suggests. Um, he said, I've always supported further inquiries into the or origins of COVID, including President Biden's recent call, as it is important that we more fully understand how the virus emerged. As is true for any scientific process, there are several things that would lend credence to the lab leak hypothesis that would make me change my mind. So, Dana, nothing has actually changed. This is not a... He just, but then he was asked, why did you shut down your Twitter account? He said, I found that information and comments I posted were being taken out of context or misrepresented to push false narratives, in particular about the origins of COVID. Daily attacks against scientists and the scientific method have also become common. Much of the conversation has steered away from the science. For those reasons, I felt at present I can no longer productively contribute to the platform. I mean, I, I, this is there, there's, yeah. the right side has always been like this. You go back to the former guy, even when there was leaks. He wasn't upset that that happened. Like, I think there was a leak that you know, the, the suckers and losers, whatever it was, one of them was true. <laughs> and he was mad at the New York Times for breaking it. He right. wasn't upset at, and, and the right was mad at the New York Times for breaking it. They weren't upset that the that then president of the United States did something horrifying. It's the same thing with this. Yeah. At this point, they just want to know who leaked it. They don't really care how to fix it. Right. And it would be great, even if it didn't come, even if it did come from a lab, the reason they're trying to find that out is so that this won't happen again, so that they can implement things within the labs to make sure that this won't happen again in the future. Like right. there are some positive if, things if it to was a lab that it happened right. to. Exactly. Right. So, okay. He was still talking science last night while uh, uh, President Biden was having a triumph on the world stage. 
uh, Captain Crazy Pants called into Hannity. I'm, I'm guessing only because he still looks, oh, a me- looks a mess, so he called in. Uh, oh, is this to... Okay, great. So this is this will now prevent younger people from getting the vaccine because he said... Yes. Okay. We're well, lucky we have uh, the vaccine, but the vaccine on uh, very young please. people is something that you got to really stop. You have to get back to, to running your country. I mean, I don't see reasons... And I am a big believer in what we did with the vaccine. It's incredible what we did. You see the results. But to have every school child where it's 99.99 percent, they just don't, you know, they're just not affected or affected badly. Having to receive a vaccine, I think, is something that you should start thinking about because I think it's unnecessary. Guess what, Dana? The exact opposite is true. I... (laughs) By the way, thank God this is in USA Today. A lot of people will read it. People hospitalized with COVID now have one overwhelming thing in common. They're not vaccinated. Medical centers say there's also an obvious change in the age of their sickest patients as older people are much more likely to be vaccinated than younger. Mm -hmm. One doctor said we're all seeing the same thing. When someone does get sick and comes into the hospital, they're much more likely to be young and unvaccinated. Um, It sends a very strong message to the hesitancy people out there because the data is speaking for itself. Among children, for instance, 11 and younger who can't yet get the vaccine, having vaccinated family members is keeping them out of the hospital and protecting them against COVID. Most of the kids we're seeing in the hospital with COVID or uh, the the, uh, inflammatory thing that they get because of it um, had COVID in their household, maybe a parent or a grandparent. And most of these individuals had not been vaccinated Um, in Jersey, for instance, the percentage of COVID hospitalization among those age 18 to 29 has increased 58 percent. Since the beginning of the year, by comparison, the percentage of COVID hospitalizations among 65 and older uh, declined by 31.2 percent. Once again, he's saying exactly the wrong thing at the wrong time. Right. Doctors are saying, of course, he is. Now, all of the COVID cases are young, unvaccinated people get vaccinated. We have no idea. We have no idea what this does long term. It's causing heart problems and very healthy athletes in high school. Yes. This is a long term issue. Everyone needs to ignore this lunatic. Yes, please. Thank you. (laughs) Thank you. 20 minutes after the hour. How did Barbara feel like you did in your first segment? I thought you were fantastic. I did. Is Barbara right there? Ask her what she thought. Yeah. Yeah. Please keep bringing her up. Thank you very much. (laughs) There's Barbara in the corner. Wow. Barbara's loud.